good morning everyone okay how many of you have used scilab has anyone used scilab anyone used matlab okay some of you have used matlab okay so uh, scilab is an alternative to matlab so i'm going to tell you some other good things about it and i'm going to explain to you why you should use it why it will be useful in this course and also in other courses and possibly in the future as well some of you may want to take it up as your career it will become clear as we go along so this is uh, 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 a possible outline for this uh, i said possible because we are going to do some calculations and depending on the interest you show we will do lots of things and then we may cover all of this or only some of it but we will certainly do the things that you want to <clears throat> we will start with a brief history of scilab it was started by professor clive bowler who was a computer science professor in new mexico state university he was in robust algorithms project that means how to compute eigen values how to solve linear systems accurately without any mistake even for large scale systems it should compute correctly and in time so he got funding from the government us government to develop matlab what is this matlab by the way matlab in fortran that is the original matlab this we are talking about in the early 80s or late 70s from 75 onwards you can say 75 to 80 was the time frame he released this matlab in the early 80s as open source this is written in fortran that was one of the conditions for funding that whatever is created should be released as open source but some people got the idea that they can actually commercialize this so they started with this open source thing and started their own companies there were two products matrix x and control c that came out of this matlab okay they added some user interface added documentation added some extra features they started selling it and it became very successful matrix x control c and then after seeing this professor moller realized that he made a mistake in releasing it as open source he also quit his university position he started his own company called mathworks and he wrote the entire matlab in c because it became commercial of course now it is it has grown very big they have about 2000 staff members working for mathworks so this is the story of um, early history out of this came scilab also so some french people said that they would also go commercial they started with the open source matlab and then they wrote they they called it blaise i think b l a i s e or something like that but they found that they were not selling any copies maybe they were selling something like one copy a month so they figured that it was not at all economically viable to sustain that operation and so they said they would become open source so they released it as open source so i would say uh, probably from late 90s scilab is available as a open source software it is equivalent of matlab you see that all of them have come from the original matlab so they are all matlab compatible scilab will be about 95% compatible and uh, these packages are used extensively for linear algebra simulation solving that is solving differential equations signal processing control system design um identification you name it it is uh, any one of these is used uh matrix x and control c we don't hear much about that about them so we have mainly only these two uh matlab which is the commercial thing and scilab is just the opposite it is completely open source okay and scilab is 
created for mathematicians. So whatever I am saying now is applicable to all of these packages, but my focus is going to be on Scilab because I am going to also emphasize why Scilab is important to you, why we should adopt Scilab, why we should use Scilab in our calculations. As I told you, Cleve Moller, when he uh, was teaching mathematics in the class, numerical analysis, multiplying matrix by vector and so on, he saw a disconnect between the way he was teaching in the class and the way it was coded, right? Because when you write, when you want to tell your class, I want to multiply matrix A with vector X, you just type A into X. Whereas when you go to implement that, you have to type it, you have to allocate the storage, you have to do a for loop, you have to compute, you have to do lots of these things. He said, why should computation be more difficult? Why can't the computer do understand what the mathematician wants to do and implement it. So he came up with this environment. Okay. So I have uh, simultaneously opened a Scilab uh, environment. So if I, for example, supposing I say A equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0. I have got this matrix A and then suppose I have the mat uh, vector X. So I have got this vector X. Suppose I want to multiply these two, I just have to type A times X. So this environment was created for mathematicians. Like the way they would do mathematics in the class. If you want to multiply a matrix and a scalar, you would just type, for example, 2 into A. It will do that. So he said, why can't it do that? So for example, 2 times A, it will just do that. It will multiply. It knows that it is doing a vector scalar arithmetic or matrix scalar arithmetic. It should do that. Okay? And notice that I did not type it. I did not allocate storage. I didn't do any of that and it does that automatically. So as a result, this Scilab is created for mathematicians and it enhances the productivity of the programmer. You can just come to the calculation directly. Okay? <clears throat> this is what I said just now and belongs to the MATLAB family originally created by Professor Klee Moller. It can call programs written in Fortran and C it has a good graphics capability, it has a very large installed base and it also has an underlying language, interpreted language. For example, it has uh, if then else loop, for loop, while loop, case statement, it is possible to define a function. So it has an underlying language. So using that, you can actually define your own algorithms. And above all, it is free. Yeah, that is actually extremely important. I'm going to talk about that soon, why it is important. I want to spend some time on why we should actually go for open source software. It is extremely important. Okay? Commercial software is expensive and possibly for students, it may be cheap. Okay. How many of you have installed MATLAB? Okay. How many of you bought? Unfortunately, actually the company doesn't mind even if you use illegal copies. It doesn't mind. But the issue is something else. Students use commercial software in colleges. Unfortunately, it is not available at small and medium companies. The reason is the cost. Okay, so use of unauthorized software by commercial establishments result, result in disasters. Companies may even have to close down, have to bear jail sentences, etc. And as a result, 
most of the SMEs in India do not use any software. Especially, this is especially true for high tech software where the cost differential is enormous. If you take something like Microsoft Office, there may not be too much difference between academic price and commercial price. But some other high tech software packages may be available, may be available only at very high prices, maybe 100 times, sometimes even 1000 times because you may even get a free copy in acad academia. So if you multiply it, it's going to be 1000 times, 10,000 times. So it will not be, so I would even say that, uh, so as a result this puts companies at a great disadvantage uh, because we don't use commercial software because these, uh, after all, software packages are written to improve your productivity, okay, to, and to predict things, to solve your problem, to solve a model, so on and so forth. And so I argue here that there is no alternative to open source software and um, commercial software that is thousand times more expensive for industry is like a book that you cannot use outside the classroom, okay. And it has, uh, so actually it creates a lot of possibilities for the potential entrepreneurs that it is possible for you to offer consulting services using something like Scilab or something along those lines that you can actually, you are, because the platform is free, free of cost and the final delivered product also will run on, in the company without any further additional investment, right. So as a result it gives lot of exciting opportunities. We have a long way to go in this country. We have to solve many problems, okay. Our industry has to solve challenging problems, especially if they want to compete with other people, other companies, okay, other companies from other countries. So this will, uh, using reliable software, open source software has a great potential and we desperately need this. Okay, now uh, I will start with uh, the usage of Scilab. I will give some outline, some of the features, it is not possible to cover all of it. I want to give you a flavor of Scilab in the rest of this talk. Uh, the way I have arranged this uh, slide is my commands are given in black, okay, and the resulting answer is in blue, okay. And uh, in the second line, can somebody tell me why B is not displayed? There is a semicolon, okay. So Scilab says that anytime you put semicolon, the result will not be echoed, okay. A plus B plus C, it will say 22. In the first one, I just computed, it puts the result in ANS, short form for answer, which is the default variable. Otherwise, I can assign them to variables and I do the computation. The computational result also goes to some default thing called ANS. Um, before I uh, proceed, there is one thing that I want to tell you. So before I uh, get started, there is another. Uh, uh, brief, uh, this thing, this is also extremely important for you. There will be some people who will come and say this is open source software, may not be that good. Don't use it, our product is lot better, no bugs and so on. So I have gone to the website of first Scilab user conference, okay. And this was held on 1st July 2009. Okay, if you look at the program, the program as well as presentations used in that conference are there. If you look at the keynote address, okay, I gave this talk, National Mission on Education through ICT on open source software. And of course, if you go to the presentations here, the talk material is here. I wanted to tell you, refer to not to this talk, 
but to the talk given subsequently in the afternoon on this talk at 3:30 use of scilab for space mission analysis theory martin cnes cnes is equivalent of their isro okay through ariane they have launched several of our satellites in the early part of our isro's history they used to launch our satellites so i after the i was chairing that session i asked uh, dr martin the senior manager in cnes i asked him after his talk was over his talk is here by the way you can go through the presentation so he went on explaining how they use scilab in their space mission so i asked him finally is there any application for which you don't use scilab that was my question he said no they use scilab for everything so if somebody says scilab doesn't work don't believe them don't believe them okay so that is an important thing i wanted to tell you in case there are some myths one of the things that you should do when you use scilab is to open a file open using a command called diary so that whatever you do from that time onwards will go to that file okay and then you can save that file go and delete unnecessary things and then you have the working version so let me just check so this is my okay so let me say diary test dot all right so from now on whatever i do will go into this file called test dot ce which is in this directory which i got using the pwd command okay we saw all of this any time you have a semicolon result is not echoed otherwise it is echoed by the way i'll put this pdf file also okay uh scilab has uh has uh, uh variables predefined variables reserved variables for example pi you have to put a percent sign in front this is different from matlab in matlab you will just type pi otherwise you will say percent pi so you can do things like this so if you want to create a vector you can say x equals 1 through 5 it will just say 1 through 5 you can do things like x y equals 1 in increments of so let me just do this 0 in increments of 0.2 all the way up to 1 okay so i'll just create it and then i can say something like uh let me see i can also say x z equals lin space of 0 to 1 and 6 points right there are 6 points here that will also be you can use the lin space you can do you can of course enumerate the whole thing so there are many ways to create vectors and so after defining this you can calculate sine of this okay y equals sine of z okay so it has created now what i could do is i can say um y equals 0 to 0.2 to so let me not just do go up to 1 but go up to 3 multiply the whole thing by percent pi right i'm creating a vector 0 to 3 in increments of 0.2 multiply the whole thing by pi and i put a semicolon Okay, how many numbers? So, what is the length of y? What is the length of y? Sixteen. Length of y is sixteen because you have an extra endpoint. You have to add that. Fifteen plus one, sixteen, right? So, I can say z equals 
sin of y and then I can say things like plot 2D of y comma z. If I have more points, you will get a smooth point, smooth curve. So, you can do all these calculations. Now, this is very interesting. So, let me do the following A equals 1 through 5, B, by the way, Scilab is case sensitive. Small a is different from capital A, just like in C. But between C and Scilab, there is a difference. The indexing is from 1 in Scilab, whereas in C you will start with 0. Okay. So, B equals 1 through 2 to 1 in increments of 2 all the way up to 9. Okay. Now, what will this give? B of B of 1 is to 2 is to 5. B of 1 is to 2 is to 5, what will be the answer? B is here. Okay. What will be B of 1 is to 2 is to 5? Any guess? Okay. First evaluate 1 is to 2 is to 5, what will that give? 1 is to 2 is to 5, what will it give? 1, 3, 5. Right? Starting from 1, increments of 2 all the way up to 5. So, you will get 1, 3, 5. So, B of 1, 3, 5. So, B of 1, 3, 5 will be 1, 5, 9. Okay? So, this has, that is the reason why I say that it is a high productivity tool. Right? If you are to, uh, you know, if you compare assembly and C, when you go from assembly to C, you can say that 10 lines can be coded in one line. Similarly, when you go from C to Scilab, you can say 10 lines of C will get coded into one line of Scilab. That is a increase, improvement in productivity. That is the reason why people use these packages for simulations. It also has lots of very useful libraries. For example, I defined a matrix called A, right? If I want to say determinant, okay, I want to find the eigenvalues from spectrum calculates. If I want to do singular value decomposition, you have that, so on and so forth. These are all built in and these packages are state of the art. Okay. So, CNES uses this package to launch its rockets. So, you can do things like I of course said B of 1 is to 2 is to 5. I can also do things like D equals B of 1 to 5 followed by 1 0 1. So, it becomes 1 to 5 is 1 5 9 and then to that you append 1 0 1. So, a lot of these calculations can be done very easily. Yeah. Ah, okay. What will happen if you do 1 is to 2 is to 8? Okay, let us try that. So, this is our B. B of 1 is to 2 is to 8. What do you think will happen? Nothing is defined beyond that. Okay, either it could complain or it could give its interpretation of what the answer should be. So, let us see what Scilab does. It says error, but some other implementations could go up to 1, 5, 9 and stop there. Right? So, so you want to, so, so what is D? Some other variable. Ah, 
Okay, let's let's do this. It may not even accept it. You're, are you saying that something like this? B of one is to two is to eight. Oh, that we can do. So if we just say one is to two is to eight. So ideally, it would have gone till nine, but because eight is there, it will stop at seven. Yeah, it'll stop at seven. Okay. All right. And then, of course, as I mentioned, uh, this is uh, I'm subtracting a scalar from a vector. I'm multiplying times a minus b. You can do all of this. That's not a problem. It has a command called dot. For example, a is there, it's a vector, what do you mean by square? It has no meaning, square of a matrix. But here I'm using a dot raised to. Up arrow is raised to the power, but dot raised to means you raise each element by that. So it will be 2 to the power 2, 3 to the power 2 and so on. Here I raised a dot raised to the power a itself. Then it takes appropriate value. For example, here it is 5 to the power 5. You can of course do a dot divided by b and then in fact I would want you to try out some of these things. Okay, All these calculations I would want you to try later and see if you can answer, say, see if you can explain some answers. Some of the answers are quite interesting. Okay, Some of them have deep meaning, uh, we do not have time to discuss. But if any of you would try and then ask me, I'll be glad to answer them. It has logical operators. Obviously, you need all this if you want to construct a language. Okay, we will come to that. Before that, I will do some examples here. You can compare, you know, things like this. Let me just do this, do the following. Okay, before I proceed, let me just close the diary so that I don't forget at the end. I've closed the diary. Okay, we created the thing in test.se. So I have, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Emacs here. So what I will do is. Uh, just hold on a second, hopefully I can make this bigger, the largest size I have. Okay. I hope you can see some of it, if not all. You can see that whatever we did, right? for example, the first line here says uh, error invalid in index, you may recall this. So you can go to this at the end of the session, delete all unnecessary commands, all, all the commands that didn't work. Then you have a set of commands that worked. I would want all of you to practice this, to use this. Start using Scilab, open a diary file. Then you don't have to remember anything that you did. There is a slave, the diary, that's going to remember all this for you. Okay. Now. So let me say GPA, let's go to our calculation, GPA equals 7.8, 8.3, 6.2, 5.8, 9.1, 7.2, 6 .2, 6 .8. So these are the numbers I gave last time. Okay. Then I say, let me say M equals mean of GPA. Okay. You'll find the mean. And then S equals standard deviation of GPA. So it has calculated. Then I say find GPA greater or equal to M and GPA less than M plus S. 
So from mean equal to or greater than mean up to one standard deviation. Let me find all of those. Okay. So what do you think it will give? So it is going to give from 7.3 all the way up to 8.4 for 2 or something like that. It will tell you only those locations. Okay. And that corresponds to look at this. Only these two numbers come under that. Is that okay? So it helps you in a vector do a search and locate those positions where some condition is satisfied. And it is a vector, you can do it for a whole matrix. Then you can also ask things like things like you can recall the previous commands by using up arrow. So what I do is let me close it here. And I say GPA of that, GPA corresponding to that index. Okay. So then I can also say something like grades grades. Now I am creating a New, new variable called grades. So, suppose I want to give a b to this. Ah, so, I have to say it is a character, it is a string. Okay, actually, I had defined this already. So, let me clear grades. It will say grades undefined variable. Okay, now it says A B. Right? So I can also say something like if it is greater greater than or equal to M plus S. So suppose I give A A to this. So, it has given A A and in between it is undefined. right? So, this search, locate and so on are extremely useful. So, here uh, for example, I have two variables A and B, I am comparing A and B. So, it gives all of them to be false, A and B are nowhere equal. And what will happen if I say T f equals A greater than B, what will be T f? A greater than B, it will be false, 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 false. From here onwards it is true. So, I would want you to try this. Okay, I will just uh, refer you to one uh, file and then I will post this file also in the website, then you, know, you would need that. So, this file I will, uh, uh, we conducted a workshop jointly on uh, July 6th. In fact, this ministry funding was used for this purpose. It gives examples of for loop. Okay. It gives a for loop example, while expression, and then loop breaks, case statement, and then function. Okay. And then there are also online functions, how to define them. Okay. And it is possible to save the functions into a file and call from there. Examples are given. So, it is not possible to cover all of it in this class. Um, 
Okay, all examples are here. We will post a lot of these. If you have difficulty, you can ask me. So I want to thank you.